Today, we're going to be taking advantage of our Minmus base while we complete the contract plant a flag on Minmus. Indeed, after collecting all the science we can here in the Great Flats, our engineer is going to build this completely functional rover to allow two of our Kerbals to carry science experiments to a neighboring biome. This will have us taking a look once again at the game's construction mode, this time on the surface. In addition, I'll be offering some tips when it comes to safely driving a rover, especially on a low gravity world like Minmus. Let's get started. Though I think this episode's topic of building and driving rovers stands on its own, it took two previous episodes to get us here. The first was about building, launching, and landing the core module of this Minmus base, while the previous episode was devoted to bringing over the crew and attaching the lander onto the base. But now that golf swing just completed all the science we have to collect here in the Great Flats, we need to get ourselves to a neighboring biome. And for that, we're gonna build ourselves a rover. So we're on our engineer Danilo here, and we're gonna go over here to the right, and we're gonna click onto the construction tab, which looks like this little hook. And that opens up our construction window. Now I have talked about on-site construction with Kerbals before in this video here, but the difference this time is going to be we're doing it on the surface. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna get close enough to our inventories, which are all in the uh, hitchhiker can and this inventory container down here, so that we can see everything. So there we can see all of the inventory we have. And I want to introduce a new part here this is the ground anchor. Now, what you do with the other parts, that you, most of the other parts that you see here, is you simply, just like you do in the VAB, you grab them and you stick them where you want them to go. But the ground anchor and some of these other parts here work a little differently. See, if I took this, it doesn't stick onto an existing structure. It's meant to stick to the ground, but you can't just go to the ground and drop it. That doesn't work. It's not attached to the ground right now. What you need to do is start by putting this into your Kerbal's inventory. So if I go up here, I can see Danilo's inventory. We're gonna grab this, gonna try and put it in here, but you can see it's actually, uh, well, quite a bit too big. So we need to take away both his parachute, we'll put it down here temporarily, and his EVA pack so that the ground anger can fit. And then you close construction mode, Right click on your Kerbal, and if we take a close look down here, you notice that beside the ground anchor in his inventory, there's a little down arrow with a little circle. This is the place icon, and when you see this icon on a part, that's telling you that that part needs to be placed on the ground, not stuck to something else and not just dropped, it needs to be placed, and I'll show you what I mean. You press on that, and notice that it's in front of the Kerbal, and it sticks with the Kerbal. As you move around uh, with the Kerbal, it moves around like this. And you can actually also, if you use the J, L, H, N, I, K buttons, you can rotate that through its various axes. There's absolutely no reason for me to do that. So let's put this into a good position. I want to be reasonably close so I still have access to all of the inventories. Uh, but not so close that the rover gets messed up. We'll put it right here. And then what you need to do is if we look up here, it says space to place part. So you need to press the space bar. And what you're looking for, let's give it a moment. There it goes. Is for those ground bolts to anchor themselves to the ground. So this is now part of the surface. Now, if you don't like where it is, you can right click on it, pick it up and try it again. But the difference is now that this provides a node upon which you can start your construction. You can start attaching other parts too. So for instance, if I go back into construction mode, I can grab this uh, little decoupler and I can stick that. Notice that there's a node there. I can stick that on there. And anything that you can attach normally with a node you can now attach to this. So this can be for more than just simply building rovers. This can be for building all kinds of things. But what we're talking about is building a rover. And by the way, the reason why I put that decoupler there is because I want to eventually detach the rover. I don't want it to be permanently stuck there. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of a rover. So I'm gonna move back a little bit, give myself some room. We're gonna attach on a set of small reaction wheels. Then we're gonna grab our pro body. You can use the W, A, S, D, Q, and E keys to rotate it around, just like you can in the space plane hangar and VAB. 
Excellent, welds that into place. Now I can actually straight up attach rover wheels to this if I want to, but I wanna give myself a little bit of a wider wheelbase. So I'm gonna use these cubic struts to kind of widen my wheelbase a little bit. And one thing to notice is if you take a look up here at the top right, you have many of the same sort of buttons that you have in the vehicle assembly building and space plane hanger, including like for instance, the move tool that you can move back and forth. There's also a, you can toggle that snap on and off. You also have the rotate tool. Uh, whoops, I was on something way over there. So let's place the rest of our cubic struts on. All right, there we go. And now I'm gonna attach my wheel straight onto these. And again, I can rotate if I can find, oh, that looked like the right way. Now, if it's red, it will not attach, but I want to get them kind of green. Let's see, ah, there we go, went up just a little bit. Now notice the wheel is clipping a little bit into the surface texture. That's actually good at this point. Here, I'll put it on. Notice how the shock absorbers kind of went up on that. That means there is actually some spring force on this, and that's good. Once I get all four of these on and then I detach it using the decoupler, that means that the whole probe body will lift up and I'll be able to clear this little base. So it's actually good that I'm getting a little bit of clipping action from those wheels. That looks good right there, okay. And let's see, I got a light, needs a headlight here, so we're gonna put the headlight right at the front. Uh, this plaque marks the front of the probe body. So let's see, oh, nope. there we go, a little bit upwards. Okay, it's on a little bit of a slant, so we'll use our rotate tool. Make sure our snap is off. Rotate this so it looks good. I'm gonna live with that. All right, uh, got command seats. Kerbals need seats to drive. Now, one thing is, as you're placing the command seats to be aware of, is uh, Kerbal heads, well, they are quite wide. So make sure when you put command seats on that you leave a decent amount of space so that, uh, you know, the Kerbals can fit their heads in there. Uh, we're gonna need an antenna. You can hold, just like in the VAB, the Alt key to snap to the node. So we'll put the antenna there. And then we're gonna need some power generation. We're gonna use four voltaic solar panels. And then what I think I'll do too is use the rotate tool to just sort of make sure the snap is off. Just kind of tilt them just a little bit because the sun's clearly not always gonna be directly overhead. And, well, there we go. Uh, closed construction mode. That is a completely functional rover. I think it's time for Valentina to give this a test drive. There we go, we right click on the command seat and say board EAS-1 external command seat and Valentina is now aboard. And we shall detach. There we go. Now, I'm actually can't control. I'm still on the anchor here. Notice I don't have Valentina at the bottom right, so I need to... There we go. Now I'm on the actual rover. And one thing you want to do here, let's put on SAS and I'll show you. If I put on SAS and push W to go forward, notice that it actually wants to tilt forward. Those are the reaction wheels because W also means to pitch forward, not just roll and drive forward. Um, you can get into the default keys on, on KSP and start switching them to other keys, but a simple solution is to just right click on the part and change the reaction wheels from normal to SAS only. And if we put that off, there we go. I just turned SAS off so it fell back down. And now if I drive, I'm now pushing W and Valentina is just driving. Wonderful. And we can see if we steer. Now notice all four wheels steer. You can do that if you like. That's perfectly fine. I kind of rather prefer it when the back wheels do not steer. I don't know why. A little more like a car, I suppose. But before we let Valentina get too far away, let's get back on our engineer Danilo and take him back to the lander. We'll go back into construction mode and we might as well rob some of this science so we can rob the seismic accelerometer we can rob the barometer and we shall attach them onto the back here for some more science once we are in our new biome 
And I'm just realizing this is a rather inefficient way to do this. When we get Danilo back to the lander, let's get back on our rover. We'll get Valentina to bring the rover in a little closer. Let's take the brakes off. Don't run over Shogun there. Actually, while we're doing this, a couple of other things to notice about construction mode. If we go down here to the bottom, we can see here it says Kerbals assisting zero, max part mass 1.2 tons. So what information this is giving you is that the maximum mass that Danilo can lift, which is 1.2 tons, which Maybe feels like a lot, but remember we are on Mimis and the game is taking Mimis's reduced gravity into account. And in fact, if we take a look here, notice how many parts are highlighted in green. These are all the parts that Danilo can lift by himself. But if we uh, sort of pop over to say Shogun here and maybe get her a little bit closer. That should be close enough and pop back over to Danilo, go back into construction mode. Now it says Kerbal's assisting is one and max part count is 2.41 tons. He can now lift more stuff. And you, if you, with enough Kerbal's, you can actually take apart pretty much everything <laughs> that you see here. You just need to keep on adding more and more Kerbal's to be able to manipulate more and more mass. And the assistant Kerbal's do not need to be engineers, though for construction mode, the person actually doing the construction does need to be an engineer and we can probably just simply move this goo over is there a place we can stick it there we go nicey nice and uh i think that will do it in fact i think danilo's job is done so let's get him inside but now it's time for our scientist shogun to get over to the rover board and let's go hunting for a new biome We'll head over to these nearby hills. That's sure to be a new biome. Rovers, especially on low gravity worlds like Mimmis, can get unstable and can be easily rolled. Before we get into tips to prevent that, realize you can't quick save while you are rolling along the surface. But if you quick save whenever you are stopped, you can revert back in case the worst happens. As already mentioned, set any reaction wheels to SAS only, so that the rover doesn't pitch and roll as you drive. That said, sudden turns, especially on slopes, can still easily roll the craft. A wide wheelbase helps, and some folks even put RCS blocks on their rovers for additional control, or to right an upturned craft. I would also suggest static solar panels rather than deployable ones, as they are less likely to break. Okay, and you want to slow yourself down here, and you can slow yourself down by pressing S or hitting the brakes and or both. But when you do those terrain moves like I just did there, oh, and coming up here to, uh, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes the game can be a smidge on the glitchy side on that part. Okay, so we're going to slow down here. I'm going to put on the brakes. See, we can park it on the hill because I strongly suspect we are in a new biome here. Hopefully, this will hold its position and not... Uh, now, notice as I brake that the back wheels are coming up. You can take the a SAS off to have it kind of settle down again. Oh, it looks like we're breaking, we're staying there anyway. All right, and now we got more science. Can I... Am I in a new biome? Yes, we are in Mimis's lowlands. So, let's do all this. And I could have just brought Shogun here by herself, just using her EVA pack easily enough, but clearly having all of this science equipment here is going to net me more science. Would have been nice to bring the Science Junior too, but it was a little too well integrated into the lander to be ripped out easily. One thing to make sure of though is that you do collect all the science out of this equipment. This rover is not coming back from us, so you don't want to leave anything behind. But with that all collected, it's time for us to get back. And while we're standing still, take advantage of a quick save. <laughs> we'll get her back in the seat and we'll head on back to base. And I could easily keep looking for biomes with this thing. It has an unlimited range as long as the sun is shining, but I didn't bother. I got lots of science. 
Be a little careful as I go down the hill, but then once uh, we are on the flats, we'll open this up. Again, if you're doing some wheelies like that, just turn SAS. Whoa, 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 whoa. Speed up a little bit to get those wheels to come down. <laughs> going a little too cautious, about to go back end over tea kettle there. You can see there, even with my caution, how easy it is to hit rovers to lose control on you. So be careful and quick save is the advice for the day. And also another way to get to neighboring biomes as well is just to hop over the lander. Some of you may have noticed that I still have over 1150 meters per second left in that lander, more than enough to hop over to a neighboring biome. You can often do that with not a lot of fuel though, be careful, it takes about 350 meters per second to get back home, so always make sure that you leave that reserve in the lander. But with everybody now aboard and our science safely stowed in the command capsule, it was time for us to say goodbye to Mimis. Ladders come up, there they go, and we'll put down our wheels once again. This time we'll retract these landing gears <laughs> so that those ones will stay up. All right, and all we gotta do now is undock. And oh, it gave us a nice little push as it was, but you know what, we'll push ourselves a little bit further away. SAS on, pressing N to kind of RCS that away. That's good enough for sure. Okay, and let's H to bring our speed back down again. Brakes on. We'll change our control point back to the capsule so that we're pointing up. Now landing gear can go down. Wheels can come up for the last time. And we are ready to say goodbye. RCS off. Uh, engines are on. We're going to go towards the east. And we're off. Although this is the first time in this series I've returned to Kerbin from the surface of Mimis, I have done it from the surface of the moon. And other than it being quite a lot cheaper, it really is done in much the same way. I launch towards the east even though my landing site is not on the equator and pitch over as far towards the horizon as is safe. I cut the throttle when my apoapsis hits about 12 kilometers, coast up there and then start burning prograde several seconds before apoapsis until my periapsis roughly matches the apoapsis and I'm in a stable orbit. Place a maneuver on the prograde side of Mimis so that you will be ejecting yourself in a retrograde direction relative to Mimis's orbit about Kerbin. Play around with the amount of the burn and the timing until your periapsis with Kerbin is well within the atmosphere. I find an altitude of about 35 kilometers works well for both Mimis and the moon. Now, Mimis's inclined orbit, combined with my inclined parking orbit, did result in an inclined transfer orbit to Kerbin. This is actually fine, but if you want, you can add a normal component to your burn to bring this inclination down. Due to Mimis's low gravity, this actually doesn't add much at all to the burn. Then it's just performing the burn and riding down to Kerbin for re-entry. And while our crew enjoy that ride, why don't I take this opportunity to go over the main takeaways from this episode. The main topic was using construction mode on the surface, and especially the value of the ground anchor part to get you started. Remember that this part must be placed by a Kerbal, not just dropped from the inventory. I then took the newly built rover for a spin for more science in another biome and discussed some driving tips, in particular the advantage of switching any reaction wheels to SAS only, especially on low gravity worlds. And finally, I took a quick look at how to return our brave crew back to the surface of Kerbin. And with that, I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. I hope you found it useful and that I'll be seeing you again for the next one.